Hey guys, it's Zara with Zara PhD. I am the author of Minimalist Homeschooling, and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how to homeschool with confidence. And first of all, I want to take a minute to say that um, I sort of want to do like a reality check or a heart check with you right now, and I want you to realize that when we feel doubtful about homeschooling, it's coming from a really well-intentioned place usually. So usually it's because we want so badly to give our children the best. And so we take that pressure on and that responsibility on and we take it to heart. And the fact is, is that we all have room for improvement, all of us. And so a lot of times what I think is happening is that, um, we mistake our humility, this understanding that we have room for improvement, we start to mistake that for inadequacy, right? So even though you have room for improvement, doesn't mean you're not doing an amazing job. So first things first, like let's do a little heart check and realize that yes, we are flawed and we are imperfect, but that doesn't mean we're not awesome in a lot of other ways. So don't let your humility and your desire for self-improvement to cross the line and become like self-deprecation. We want to stay empowered and motivated, not feel defeated and inadequate and like we have failed. Okay. So that's the first thing I wanted to, I wanted to say really quickly. The next thing I wanted to say is that on a practical level, when we practice gratitude, it can really help our confidence. And it looks something like this. We show gratitude for what we are doing in our homeschool instead of focusing on all the things we are not. We speak the value of what we are doing, first of all, because of that we chose those things because they're valuable. And second of all, because if we were to bring in more and more and more and more, that's going to crowd out those valuable things. And so we have to understand that the reason we're not doing all those other things is because what we have right now is so valuable and we don't want to jeopardize that. So make sure what you're doing is really valuable and then speak the value of that. Don't speak the value of all these other things that you could be doing because the fact of the matter is, is that you hopefully have chosen what is most valuable right now. And that's what's important. Okay, so focus on that. Practice gratitude and do it proactively. Do it at the beginning of your day. What are you excited about doing today? How are those things so valuable to you and your family today? Okay? And do it proactively, not at the end of the day when you're trying to pull yourself up by your bootstraps because you feel like you failed. Let's be proactive about gratitude, guys. Okay? And it's the same thing we teach our kids, that when we practice gratitude for what we already have, then suddenly the grass doesn't seem so green on the other side. Suddenly, we're not so tempted by the bright and shiny things. Okay, so the second thing you can do is spend some time with other people. So if you're really feeling a lack of confidence in your homeschooling, I'm not saying that you go out and you have a big comparison fest with all the people, but I am saying that go out and spend some time, whether it's with some other children and families um, that are around the same age, whether it's with other homeschoolers, have an honest heart to heart with some other homeschool moms and get a reality check about how kids your age are doing. Because a lot of times we set our expectations higher and higher and higher and higher for our kids. And then we need to take a step back and say, what's realistic for this age? Okay. Number three, take a standardized test. I'm not going to debate the um, sort of worthiness of standardized tests here in this forum. Everybody has their opinion. If standardized tests are not for you, skip this part. I have more tips to come. However, if you are constantly worried that you are not meeting the needs of your child academically, then for goodness sake, take a standardized test. You can do a, an online California achievement test. It costs like $25 per child. You can use a fake name for your child if you want. You can, I, I always prep my kids with, this has nothing to do with you. This is helping me as a teacher know what I haven't taught you yet. I don't expect you to know anything I haven't taught you. Let's just see where you stand so that I can plan our next year. But for goodness sake, guys, if you're going to freak out about something, if you're going to sit there and convince yourself that your kids are not well prepared and they're not meeting the standards, then let's make sure that your fear is actually accurate. So take the standardized test. And honestly, we started this because my husband um, wasn't sure 
just wasn't sure. You know, he didn't see the kids every day making progress, and he wasn't sure what other kids their age were doing. And so it really helped reassure him that our kids were on track. And therefore, it took a lot of pressure off of me. So whatever your reasoning is, if you're struggling with self-confidence and making sure that your kids are on that track, there's no shame in taking a standardized test, in my opinion. Okay, the next thing I wanted to say is know your grade standards. This is not, this does not mean that grade standards are grade requirements. But you can look up what is standard to be taught that year in your grade, or you can get one of the books that's like what your first grader, third grader, fifth grader, sixth grader needs to know. There's a whole series of books. What your blank grader needs to know. Start with that as a foundation, as sort of your table of contents of what you're going to cover for the year. Get a BrainQuest massive workbook if you have to and march your kids through it. It doesn't take that long. Quite honestly, you'll still have the whole year to teach them. But just to convince yourself that you're on track, there are a lot of resources out there. And I know we don't like to do busy work and I know we don't want, we want everything to be meaningful and valuable. But you know what? Your sanity and your confidence is meaningful and valuable as well. So if it means taking some time every day to do the worksheets, if it means taking some time to go to the library and get those books about what's standard for kids your age, their age, then do it, right? Just do it. All right, and then the last thing I wanted to say is that really consider being a minimalist homeschooling. Like, learn it for real, because minimalist homeschooling is a mindset shift where you get away from worrying about whether you're doing enough. Uh, because enough has no inherent value. What good is enough? Like, what does that even mean? It's a moving target. There will always be more you could do or should do or can do or would do. So the issue here, if you're really struggling with self-confidence, is how are you defining success? What is homeschool success? Because if your definition of homeschool success is doing enough, then you're constantly going to be chasing that carrot. So you need a healthy definition of what homeschool success is. And when I made that mindset shift, honestly, I don't worry nearly as much about whether or not our homeschool is effective because now I know what effective and successful actually means and I can quantify it. And so I can homeschool with a sense of ease because it's not a moving target, right? It's, it's, it's known, it's a known quantity, and I can get there, and it's realistic, and it's doable. So that's all I have today. I'm gonna to put some links in the comments as usual, and I hope that I'll see more of you. I'm wishing you all the simple things. Don't forget to leave me some comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe and all those things. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.